so many of us in this province are, are faced with the prospect of aging parents. And how best to care for an aging population is a topic of some debate across BC. Daniel Fontaine is the CEO of the BC Care Providers Association, joins us tonight in the newsroom. Daniel, hi. Hello. You know, we spend a lot of money in BC and in Canada on long-term care facilities, uh, on acute care for seniors. That's not what Canadians want. Yeah, we just conducted a poll, actually Insights West did a poll, and the results were revealed uh, earlier today. And interestingly, about 61% of British Columbians, when asked, said that we are actually putting too much of a focus on acute care, on emergency rooms, and, and in places where um, the care is inappropriate, really, for seniors. And they've said that we should be taking some of those investments and shifting them from the acute care into a more appropriate setting, setting for seniors, which actually delivers better outcomes. And that's more in the residential care or um, home care. Yeah, we'd like to think that our, our, our parents or our loved ones could, could age in place, age in the home that they, that they know so well, but it's, it's difficult for so many families to get that done. Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, in fact, the actual age of uh, entry now into a residential care home is about 88 years old. So, is that right? Yeah, it's really changed. So about a decade ago or so, uh, that would have been significantly younger. But what's happening is people are actually staying at home longer. So they're, because of uh, home care and opportunities to stay at home longer. By the time they actually uh, come into a care home, they're coming in now much later. But one of the um, results of that as well is usually they have a much higher level of acuity or medical complexity. So uh, that means that the people who are within a care home today are really different than they were, say, 15 years ago. Many of them are living with uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, and as a result, we have to change in terms of the type of care we can deliver and making sure that, uh, that they um, live in that setting in a very positive way. As we have seen so often with our health care system, our health care system deals with acute care quite, quite effectively. If you're sick, you go to the hospital and you're, and you're dealt with. If you're potentially sick, though, it's that lead-up period that we're not so good at. Yeah, and if you look at the numbers, it's quite staggering. The average cost for, uh, for example, if a senior is in an, a hospital like Surrey Memorial, is roughly about $1,800 per day. And then you compare that, for example, to a residential care uh, home where the cost can be between perhaps as low as $200 up to $300 per day. So you know it just makes dollars and cents to actually make sure that seniors are in the appropriate place and not sitting um, or laying in a bed in, in Surrey Memorial. And if they were in the residential care, it would actually free up the beds to do the kinds of things that people are asking for, like hip surgeries and knee surgeries and the kind of things you, you read and hear about all the time. Uh, so having seniors move into appropriate care facilities, uh, that, that's great, but is there staff available to make sure that they're looked after? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, and will continue to be an issue as our population ages, actually, one of the byproducts of that is it is harder to find folks who are going to be working within the care home. So we as a sector a few years ago undertook a, a bit of a campaign called BC Cares to try to encourage uh, people to actually get into the sector to become care aides, licensed practical nurses, registered nurses. It is a challenge, but it's definitely something that I think we can, we can overcome. And I think if we look at everything from the scope of practice uh, as to what LPNs and, and RNs are actually doing on site to um, encouraging people to get into the sector because it can be a very rewarding career to be a care aide. So we're working on that and we're pretty confident we'll, we're able to, to pull in the, the, the human resources we're going to need. There are challenges, however, Aaron, in rural areas. Mm. Um, the urban areas is a little bit less uh, challenging, but definitely in places like uh, Kelowna, Kamloops, uh, areas in the Okanagan where the cost of housing is uh, going up uh, dramatically and it might be a bit more of a challenge to find workers. So we like the idea of, of keeping seniors out of acute care facilities. Is the government listening? Can we, can we get the government to shift its funding model? Well, the government has actually just released a report, uh, actually, in fact, a, a series of five reports uh, about a month ago. And in those reports, they did actually quite clearly indicate that there, it, the time to shift dollars out of acute care and into continuing care is now. So they understand it. Uh, the public clearly um, understands it as well, given the poll results. 
Um, our uh, sectors, our members here at the BC Care Providers Association are more than willing to, uh, to work with government and the health authorities to do it. So really now it is incumbent on all, upon all of us to really come up with the plan to make it happen. And we do have the time, it's not like we have to have it done tomorrow, but we do have to get moving. We do have to begin to set up a, a funding model and a process to allow for people to age in place and if they do need to go into residential care that that care is uh, available for them. How much work do families need to do on this front? Uh, how much do we need to advocate for our, our loved ones who are getting older? Well, they do all the time. I mean, uh, families play an incredible role. Initially, uh, oftentimes they are the primary caregiver, so they actually provide the care at home in that home setting. And then when uh, th their loved one is in a residential care facility, they also uh, continue to play a significant role. But they do have to be involved. They have to you know, contact their health authorities. They have to make sure that they advocate. And, and if their loved one is in, for example, an acute care a home, they have to really push hard to try to get them out of that inappropriate care and into a place that will produce much better outcomes for their, their mum or dad. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank I you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Daniel Fontaine is the CEO of the BC Care Providers Association. Joining us tonight in the newsroom. Good night. Good night.